All right. Hallelujah. <laughs> there for a while, it looked like we'd going to have to be Nanook of the North to make it to church today, brothers. Amen. Let's thank the Lord. In Jesus' name, Father, I come to you. I want to thank you, praise you for your marvelous grace, Father. Lord God, we thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses from all unrighteousness. We thank you that you've given us safety to allow us to gather in thy house, Lord, that we might study your word, Father, fellowship around it, and be encouraged by it. Now, Lord, I pray that you give me wisdom, Father, grant me utterance in the Holy Ghost, that I might tr uh, teach thy word. Lord God, open our hearts, give us understanding, Lord, and we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, for thou alone art worthy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask these things. Amen. 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 We'll continue our study on the uh, 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 the pre-trib rapture, and actually we've studied every type of rapture doctrine but the pre-trib so far, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I like to go ahead and, and try to imagine the questions that would be asked of me by somebody on the other side. I'll look at what they think and and then based on a knowledge of, of what what they believe, I, I'll try and put myself in their place and I ask myself the questions and that's how I decide what I'm gonna deal with, how what I'm gonna teach on, what I'm gonna focus on. That's why we spent so much time on the uh, post-trib and, and the mid-trib now uh, rapture doctrines because these things have to be dealt with. If I don't answer the questions ahead of time, if I just came in and in one lesson taught the pre-trib rapture and that was it, that would open up the same amount of uh, time in, in uh, comments and contention and debate as I'm already spending with my preemptive strikes <laughs> against, against their questions, trying to answer them uh, ahead of time. Now, we've been looking particularly at the mid-trib rapture uh, doctrine, and last week, let's see, I didn't I bring all my notes. Well, no, last week uh, we finished up Looking at the two witnesses, I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, we were talking about those two witnesses, and uh, I believe at the end of the lesson, the the uh, we were looking at at where they fit in. And of course, if you run the references, these two olive trees uh, and the two candlesticks, they're found in the book of Zechariah, chapter four, verse three, verse eleven, and verse number fourteen. I'm not going to go there, but but anyway, that's where they're at. When Zechariah sees them, they're standing before the Lord. So whoever these two guys are here, whoever they are, and I believe it's Elijah and Moses, but whoever they are, they're people that in Zechariah's day had already lived and died. And uh, the remarkable thing is that they are in the presence of, of the Lord, that's that's a, a mind blower. The two olive trees are. I mean, there's some things you just can't. Of course, I could give you all kinds of of speculation about that, but I can't say book, chapter, and verse how that occurs, why it occurs. All I can say is that He's God and He does what pleases Him, and I I can not understand and I cannot. Uh, explain everything in the Bible, but I can believe it and say amen. And that's what I do. I say amen. But we looked at them and uh, we're talking about the length of their uh, ministry that was 42 months or 1,260 days, how that they were killed and then they're called up into heaven. And after after, after they are raptured, after the voice says, come up hither, and they ascend up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies behold them, then the last trump in this series of seven trumpets begins to sound. Uh, 
like I said, that puts a mid-trib rapturist in a rather difficult position, I would say, when you consider the fact uh, uh, of the timing of the trumpet, 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. The trump sounds and then we go. Here they went and then the trump sounds. Things that are different are not the same. Amen. It's got to be two. It, it, the last trump is not a reference to the last in a series here, and I'll get to that in a few minutes. But the thing that I want to look at this week on the mid tribulation rapture doctrine and what I see to be a major problem with it is the timing of the rapture. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 36 when he was talking about the last days and, uh, and about, uh, you know, they're saying, well, when will, when, 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 are, when will you come? When are you going to restore the kingdom? What will be the sign of thy coming? This and that and the other. And uh, Jesus answered in Matthew 24 and 36, said, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. To the same question in Mark 13, 32 and 33, Jesus said, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. In Acts chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, his disciples, the apostles, as they're gathered there speaking to the Lord Jesus Christ when he's about to ascend into heaven, they ask him when, it says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his power. So there are three statements that very clearly tell us that we cannot know the day or the hour in which the rapture takes place. But in reality, the mid-trib rapture position denies those statements. You see, it, 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 it in essence, there's what, what they do, and I know they don't mean to do this, and I know if you nailed them down on it that they wouldn't even realize that they have done it and it's not their intention to do it i believe that they love the lord they believe his word they just understand it differently but they deny it by the very nature of their doctrine look at the Re revelation chapter number 11 verses 2 and 3 Revelation 11, 2 and 3, it says, But the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Then verses 7 through 11 and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Of course, that's Jerusalem. It's not New York City. It's not London, England. Sorry, uh, British Israelism, it's Israel, it's Jerusalem, it's the city where our Lord was crucified. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon 
them which saw. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Do you see the problem with that? In light of Matthew 24, 36, Mark 13, 22, and 23, and Acts 1, 6, and 7, do you see the problem with this? Here it is. If you take and add three and a half days to 1,260 days, and you know and you will know when the tribulation starts, you're not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief, then you know to the day when this rapture will take place. 1,263 and one half days to the minute from the time the Antichrist assumes power, this rapture takes place. Now as I said, I don't think that they are intentionally doing this. I don't think that they believe that God's a liar. I know that they know that it's impossible for God to lie. I don't believe that they think that Jesus made a mistake. They know that the scriptures cannot be broken. But brother, whenever you get a little haywire on your doctrine there are mistakes built into it. There are always going to be holes and gaps in your teaching. And if somebody will scrutinize it with a level of intensity, you'll realize them. The biggest thing is when they come at you, generally they come at you, they're on the offensive and they put you in a defensive posture. Therefore, you're not able to do anything but fend off the attack. You can see what I'm saying? But if you can stop, relax, sit down and look at what they say and really think about it instead of dismiss it. I mean, try to understand their point of view. Look at it and prayerfully examine it. And that's what I do with all of this stuff. You know what? I don't want to be right. I want to do right. Amen? Amen? I don't want to be right for the sake of winning an argument. I want the truth. I want the truth of the Word of God above and beyond all else. I want to know what thus saith the Lord, because in the final analysis, when I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, and He's not going to uh, give me a reward based on how clever my arguments are, on how uh, well I was able to articulate my position, on the fact that I was able to put to silence those who uh, opposed me, if that happens to be the case. Often it's not. <laughs> but, but what he's looking for is this. It's, it's, re it's required in a man that as, uh, in a steward that he be faithful. Amen. And to be faithful means to, by faith, believe what the Word of God says. And if I am to fulfill the command of Paul to Timothy, to study, to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth, then I need to follow the Bible admonition and instruction on how to properly study the Word of God found in 1 Corinthians 2 and 13 where it tells us that we're to compare spiritual things with spiritual. And let's look here just for a moment at Isaiah chapter 28. Back in Isaiah 28. In verse number 10, where it says, well, let's start in verse 9. The question is asked, Whom shall he, God, teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept, that's truth, must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing 
yet they would not hear. They would not hear. But the word of the Lord, now listen to this, but the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, that's truth upon truth, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. God has given us his word in such a, uh, a manner, in a form that assures that the proud cannot understand it because of their arrogance and their, their hard-headedness, their, the fact that they're stiff-necked and hard-hearted and they value their doctrinal position above the veracity of God's Word, they cannot understand the Word of God. It's what mama believed. It's what daddy believed. It's what I've been taught all my life. And bless God, I'm not going to change. Well, i got to tell you something. Mama and daddy might have been some saved people, and they might have loved the Lord, but they could be wrong. Yeah, right. Amen. Brother Tony, they rapture was <clears throat> revealed to the Apostle Paul, the mystery. That's the right. When they were asking here in Acts, they, they wouldn't ask him about the rapture. No, they weren't. They were asking about the restoration of the kingdom. Yeah. And even in Matthew, <clears throat> he'd stop. The idea. But, but there's, a, there's a dual application to Jesus' statements there. In fact, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm convinced myself, and I'll be dealing with this next week, uh, I'm pretty sure that, that when Jesus says that you know not the day or the hour, now they didn't know, yeah. but, but if you're in the tribulation period, you're going to know. But there's some people who he's going to appear, appear to, who he will appear to, yeah. without a, a, a timetable laid out that allows them to figure out to the day when he's coming. You'll be able to, if you're in the tribulation period, here's, here's my argument. If you're in the tribulation period and you know the day that the Antichrist assumes power, then you know when you see those two witnesses that they will testify 42 months. Amen. They will lie in the streets dead for three and a half days. You know when they're going up. And you know that at the end of that 42 months, it's going to be followed by another 42 months that culminates with the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ coming back in the clouds of glory. Amen. And not only that, but he's preceded by the sign of the Son of Man. Yep. Uh, the world is going to know. Amen. So this idea that there's a people who he's going to come for and catch unawares can't apply to them. Yep. It can't. It can't. By virtue of all the seven years of signs, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. What do they say? What do they say? They go and they hide themselves in the mountains and in the caves of the rocks and cry out to the mountains and the rocks, fall upon us and hide us. Uh, from the, the face of him that sitteth upon the throne uh, and from the Lamb, for the wrath of the Lamb is on us. They know. They know. There's an angel from heaven flying through the atmosphere preaching the everlasting gospel to a lost and dying world and they hate him and will not repent and believe on Jesus. They know, but there's people he's coming for who ain't going to know the day or the hour. They can't know. Oh, they can, you can know in generalities. Uh, we know that the day's at hand because Israel's being regathered. Uh, and, and the same thing will happen. I asked you last week, I believe it was, how many of you have seen somebody in the last, uh, during your Christian life who you just thought, well, that's the Antichrist. Yeah. <laughs> well, if, then it, to me at least, it's plausible that, that when this next war breaks out in the Middle East, the one that's prophesied in the book of Ezekiel, where you got Russia, Syria, Turkey, uh, uh, 
uh, Iran, uh, what's the other? There are two more countries, and I can't think of the names of them. Uh, Libya and Ethiopia coming against Israel. When this when this war breaks out, man, you know, oh, we're there, we're there. And when the guy steps up to broke after it's after that war, after that war. Then it says in, in, in Daniel chapter number 9 that after the war, he comes in and draws up a, a covenant between Israel and her enemies. If you see that, you know the rapture's right at the door. We're ready to go. Pardon me. Good breakfast. <laughs> but, and, and, and that's the thing. That's the thing. But, the 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 mid trib rapture position though as i was saying because of the of the fact that the bible gives us a time a timetable that is very clear and tells us exactly how many days the rapture is going to last i mean the uh, tribulation is going to last tells us exactly when the uh, two witnesses are going to be called up. That can't be the rapture of the church because you would know the day and the hour. You could, you could set your watch by it. You will know. You will know. Now, that's a problem for the mid-trib people. And, you know, they'll have... they, they got to deal with that. they got to deal with that. I'm hoping if any... Of them hear this message that they'll prayerfully consider what I'm saying. But you know how it is, man. I told you the story the other night about the uh, the the rabbi who was debating with ten other rabbis, and he uh, lays down a truth, and they're all saying, "Oh, brother, you're wrong. We disagree. We disagree. You're wrong." And he said, "Well, if." What I'm saying is true. Then let this tree uproot itself and move to the side of that mountain. And a tree uproots itself and moves over to the side of the mountain. <laughs> they said, truth is not established by moving trees. He said, well, if I'm telling the truth, let this river begin to flow in the opposite direction and immediately the river started to flow backwards and they said the way the water flows does not establish truth and he says well if i'm telling the truth may god in heaven answer and say so right now and the lord said he's right you could hear it coming from heaven, the thunderous voice of God. And the ten rabbis looked at this one rabbi and said, well, that makes ten to two. <laughs> See, <laughs> they, wouldn't, they wouldn't budge. God said it. And they said, well, now it's ten to two. And that's the way people are. I remember talking to uh, Brother Wilkerson a number of years back when I worked with him, you know, on this King James Bible issue. And, and Kent, of course, he, he, he wasted money getting an education down <laughs> at one of the local Bible colleges. And, and uh, he knows Greek and Hebrew. And at the time, I'd say he's probably still working on it, constantly revising it because that's what educated people do. He was doing his own translation of the scriptures. And, uh, and I'm giving him all this evidence, showing him all these things, showing him all the, the, uh, the, the false doctrine and the occult references and all these other things that can be found in new Bible versions. And finally, I just, you know, I, I'd given him so much evidence and he couldn't refute it. He couldn't deny it. He didn't even try. He just say, well, I'm still going to do this. And I told him, I said, if God wrote the truth across the sky in flaming letters the size of boxcars on a train, you wouldn't believe it, would you? And that's the way people are, man. We're hard-headed. Good Christian people. 
hard-headed, steeped in tradition. Can't, can't let go of it, man. Once you get that thing ingrained in your mind. It, and see, here's the thing. It's, it's not, it's, 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 it's pride. That's the main thing, I believe, the main motivation. Even though we wouldn't admit it, even though we don't see it, what proud man does see his pride. If you're a liar, well, you know. But if you're proud, you're just thinking all the great things you think about yourself are so because they're so. <laughs> That's real pride. That's real pride. But anyways, uh, that, that's a problem for the mid-tribulation rapture people. The timing, the timing, the timing of the rapture is clearly stated, if they're correct, in Revelation chapter number 11. Now, let's look at this trump. I'd like to look at the trumpet for just a few minutes that we've got left here today. And uh, let me see how long we've got. There, there are... Uh, Traditionally, in traditional Judaism, and since the Bible nowhere tells us what the trumpet, it doesn't discuss, it says that trumpets are blown, but it doesn't tell us what's blown on them or anything like that. We can only assume the purpose of them by the context in which it's found. But in traditional Judaism, and I know they've got a lot of stuff that's that's whacked out, but believe me, the, that Temple Mount organization over in Israel, they've studied all this stuff out, and they've read the writings of the ancient rabbis, people who lived uh, during Old Testament times, people who lived during the Babylonian captivity. I know some of them were what they were. I understand all of that, but there were still some good real Jews, some children of Abraham, they that were Jews because they had a circumcised heart. They were Jews inwardly, not just outwardly. Now, you got to realize that too. And based on these writings, uh, they have been able to, uh, to, to continue to play the ancient melodies or songs, whatever you would call them, that they use at the feast days and this and that and the other. And, and, and I, I researched it a little bit and I found out that, that there are four calls given on the shofar or the trump, the trumpet. The four calls are first of all the tekiah. The tekiah is a single long blast. Just from oh, Like that, and what that does, it's a uh, that it calls the congregation to attention. Okay, this is beautiful. I mean, I just I I'm all fluttery inside thinking about it. <laughs> this is wonderful, man. The second the second thing that they trump is called the shivarium. The shivarium is three blast they you know just uh, 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 like that and uh thank you i know that's good <laughs> but what that is first you got the long blast the long one and that's a call to attention the second one is a call to worship And just the order of it, that, 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 the, the order of importance, man, you'll see, you'll see the significance of this. I know it's not in the Scripture, but, but I just think that God has got a hand in this. I do. The third type of shofar uh, trump that they do is called the teruah. The teruah is a staccato sounding blast of the trumpet trump and they go uh, uh like that you know ooh, 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 real boom, 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 driving short quick notes in succession 
That's an alarm and a call to war. And the last uh, Trump that they do is the Takaya Gadola. And that's one b long blast, very similar to the Tokaya that calls to attention, but this one builds in intensity and pitch until it's j just about hurts your ears. The, the pitch is so high. And it's much longer than the regular Kataya. And that one is the call of peace. Now let me tell you what I think about this stuff. The the uh, the first one, the Tokaya, the single blast, the call to attention, and the, I got no scripture. I'm just throwing this out. This is just uh, I'm surmising, I'm guessing. This is just something I think would be beautiful and could be true. Then it may not be, but. The Takaya, the first single note blast, is a call to attention. Can you imagine you're going about your daily business, you're doing your job, whatever, just making melody in your hearts to the Lord? I'm traveling on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still singing as I onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. And you hear that. Oh, stop and look up towards heaven. <laughs> and then the Shivarium comes, the blast that calls to worship. There you go, right in the presence. And you're with them in Revelation chapter number 4, praising God. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. And then these seven trumpets begin to sound. And like I say now, that this ain't scripture. I got no basis for this. I'm just uh, imagining it with my pure heart thinking about what it could be and 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 I, if you don't agree that's okay because i got nothing to defend it with i'm just saying wouldn't it be wonderful and then those seven trumps begin to sound and every one of them is the staccato blast the alarm the call to war because the antichrist has come to power he's on that pale horse He's coming as a peacemaker and death's following with him. The alarm, the alarm, the alarm, the alarm. And then finally, in Revelation 11, the middle of the tribulation period, three and a half days to the minute after the beginning of the tribulation, these two witnesses are called up and after that happens, this last trump begins to sound. I want you to notice something here. In verse 14, the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And I was going, how can that be? I mean, we know this is the midpoint of the tribulation period. The two witnesses come at the beginning of it, and they're called up three and a half days after the very middle of it. So how can, how can, how can the uh, second advent occur immediately? And then I realized it's because it doesn't tell you how long the seventh angel sounds. And I believe that that staccato trump will last the whole 
last part of the tribulation period right up until the Lord Jesus comes back. That's what I think. I may be wrong. I may be wrong. But I don't think I am. It wouldn't it be wonderful? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's compare the, tr the, tr the trump in 1 Corinthians 15 uh, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 with the one in Revelation 11 and 11 through 19. Okay, well, I'm out of time. We'll have to get back to these trumpets next week. Uh, please pray for me and, and pray about what we discuss, about the things I say. And like I said, the parts that I'm just kind of guessing about, I'm guessing. Yeah, I, I can't back it up with anything. It just, man, uh, I think about it and those trumpets and what they mean, and it begins to, you know, really make sense to me. And just because the Bible doesn't uh, uh, specifically say something's happening or where it's happening doesn't mean that things aren't happening. I mean, let me ask you something. Uh, what you what you well, if you've got somebody living who you're very close to right now, what are they doing right this moment? In detail, what are they doing? You don't know. You got a general, you might know where they are, and you can guess based on past experience, uh, being with them, what they might be up to. Well, I think it kind of be the same way about God in heaven and what he's doing and what's going on there right now. We got general ideas, but we don't know specifically. In fact, both Paul and John talked about things that they saw there that they weren't allowed to tell us about. Amen. So we need to have a little flexibility. Realize that God does what he pleases when he pleases. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word, Lord, and I pray that uh, you give us understanding in it. Help us, Lord God, to realize that the, the, the day of the Lord is at hand, Father, and that means one thing, that we got to go first. Lord, help us to be ready. Help us to prepare our hearts Lord, you've saved our souls. You've cleansed us from all unrighteousness. Now, God, by your grace, by your grace, Father, enable us and to receive your grace that we might stand in the grace that you have for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs>